Oh, man. I got some questions for you guys. And um, I think somebody on Killer Flicks was stating that <laughs> this might be like uh, fake news. Fake news. This might be like fake news. So take everything that I'm about to read you with a massive grain of eggs, like Giger eggs, okay? Um, the hashtag show, that hashtag show, I don't know much about that news source. It might be a very reputable news source, okay? I saw uh, Damian Maffey posted this on his Facebook page, so I want to give him credit. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to read through this, though, okay? Um, but, I mean, that title pretty much right there gives us uh, a big chunk of what this is about. Disney is rebooting Alien. Uh, and let's think about that for a sec. It's not out of the question because they do own rights to Alien right now because of the uh, acquirement. Is that a word? Acquirement of 20th Century Fox. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's very... I'm sure they're going to want to squeeze a little bit of blood out of that turnip. I'm sure they're going to want to make some kind of money. So it's uh, it's not crazy to, to think that another Alien movie is coming. There's been talk of another Alien movie ever since Covenant, you know, off and on. But uh, the big thing here is doing it without Ellen, Rip Ellen Ripley. So also thinking about this, if this were a fake story, why even like, you know, put it that way? Like do it without Ellen Ripley. Like where did that come from? So that also makes me think maybe there's a, a, a kernel of truth to this, to this rumor. Uh, because I think they would just say they're rebooting Alien. Like, that's a little bit too too um, on the nose. And l l before we start reading, I'm going to ask you guys this too, okay? And I might have some controversial thoughts for you guys on this. What do you think? Because I thought, I, was, I really gave this, I had a knee-jerk reaction, and then I started really thinking about it. What do you think about... An alien reboot without Ellen Ripley. Uh, give me a yes or no in the in the chat. You know, uh, just give me a, just say yeah, fuck no or yeah, bring it on. You know, let me know in the in the chat. Um, John Nichols says Mike from we watched a movie called this out as fake news already. The site is like we got this covered. Uh, the site is now I've heard of we got this covered. So, yeah, you, you might be right. This might be fake news. Um, but we'll go ahead and we'll we'll uh, entertain ourselves with it, okay? Because I do think we are getting another Alien movie. Eventually, we will get another Alien movie. Yeah, I think that's happening for sure, okay? Uh, but it is, it's an interesting topic to, to think, should they do this without Ellen Ripley, okay? Uh, okay, so I see no, no, no. I see bring it. I see we got it covered. <laughs> uh, Ch uh, Chud says Ripley. Alien reboot can work without Ripley. But you got to have a character who is just as strong. Uh, somebody give Chris a cookie, okay? Chris just won the prize. With that statement right there. He just won the prize. Yeah, that that's it right there. If they made another Alien movie without Ellen Ripley, would I go watch it? Absa fucking lutely because you know what they've done they've made alien uh, alien movies without ripley and two of them happen to be my favorites in the franchise um uh i think as a matter of fact the alien franchise might be my most loved franchise outside of next to halloween i think it is and i think it's one of the most consistent out of uh as far as like in my opinion top notch movies I'm talking story, freaking production value. Like, these movies look... Even the first Alien looks like it cost a billion dollars, you know? They're just A-level horror movies. But thinking about um, Ellen Ripley, uh, there are four Alien movies that I consider five out of five movies. Top-tier movies. Like, I hate to use the word perfect because there's no such thing as a perfect movie, I don't think. But... I mean, just freaking top-notch. Alien. Aliens. Prometheus. And get ready to throw tomatoes. Covenant. I fucking love Covenant. I do. I love that Covenant just doesn't feel like 
uh, a rehash of Prometheus. I feel like it feels like a natural progression of the story, and it feels like it bleeds into the first Alien. I think perfectly tone wise, because by the time you get to the end of that movie, we got Xenomorphs running around, and it's definitely the horror movie of the bunch. Like it feels really dark, you know, pretty much all the way through. Actually, uh, that scene where they're coming back from the planet and they're on the ship and something is definitely wrong and you see that guy on that like operating table and his back starts like coming out and it's a crazy oh shit what the fuck is going on moment and i think the whole scene is done very well and that scene i was like oh we got the horror that is the horror right there that we're looking for in the alien franchise hell yeah and every and I've seen Covenant quite a few times. I adore Covenant. I think and I adore Prometheus. And I'm so glad that both movies feel so different. But you know, Prometheus, uh, uh, I mean, Covenant feels like a natural progression of Prometheus. They they definitely go together very well. So, yeah, fucking love Covenant. James Graves does not like Covenant, or he doesn't like that Ripley. And those are two movies that don't have Ripley. So, bring it on. Also, here's another issue that I have um, with their being a Ripley or even not being a Ripley. Uh, okay, let's say we cast another Ripley. Uh, to fill the shoes of Sigourney Weaver, because let's assume that this is this fake story is a remake. Let's assume that it's a remake. They're obviously going to want to have a young Ripley again. You know, there's because if they don't, then we got a sequel. So, to to fill those shoes of um, Sigourney Weaver, I mean, that's we're in Rocky territory here, okay? And that's a that's a debatable statement, but Sigourney Weaver is Ripley, just like Stallone is Rocky, and the idea of replacing those two characters, and I'm just using Rocky, Rocky as an example. I'm not saying they're remaking Rocky, although he is talking like prequel stuff i love you stallone but sometimes you i don't know i don't want a prequel to rocky yeah i i part of me is like yes it'd be cool to to have ripley back again and and you know that's such a great character but i don't know i don't i don't how do you replace sigourney weaver you know that's tough it's almost better to leave it alone um george hellman says i want to see the final chapter in that trilogy although i would like them to acknowledge xenos had technical technically been created before covenant and david created a strain prometheus indicates this yeah um that's another thing i love about prometheus and um covenant because they could have played it safe and made this pretty much a slasher in space by the numbers alien movie because that's that's what the first alien was but man i mean prometheus gets pretty damn cerebral you know i mean this is thinking man's horror there's some crazy stuff and what i like about it is you like we we're we know we're in this world now where it, it's a heavy prequel it's way back in the past and so you know take for for instance the scene in prometheus where shaw is giving birth and i i remember watching that and just like you know pulling at my almost pulling the freaking arm out of my chair because i'm like what is going to come out of her because we know that it's probably not going to look exactly like, you know, uh, a baby xenomorph. So that was the possibilities. That's what I loved about Prometheus and Covenant. You know, these creatures, you know, this this evolution that eventually leads to the Xeno. I love that stuff. I love the world. I, the more they could give me, the happier I was. So, Yeah. Uh, Benjamin uh, says the Alien franchise should have ended at Aliens uh, because Aliens is in the top five sequels ever. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it should have ended at Aliens, even though I mean that's yeah, that's definitely like the peak. Um, part three was a mess, the theatrical cut. I think I wish the the uh, the actual director's cut, even though it's called the assembly cut, but the uh, Fincher has actually giving given his stamp of approval the unofficially that the assembly cut is close to what his vision was 
And it makes me wonder what if that version, because I like that Alien 3 doesn't feel like Alien 2, which doesn't feel like Alien 1. That's part of the charm of the Alien franchise. It's like every movie, it's like a different journey, you know? So I love the assembly cut. Uh, Alien Resurrection, but that, I do have fun watching Alien Resurrection, but man, it's a mess of a movie. And I hate, with a capital H, the freaking human alien at the end. I think we needed a different third act. Because up until that, up until that human alien is revealed, I was on board. I was like, damn, this it's a beautiful looking movie. French director, I mean, just a gorgeous looking alien movie, you know? Uh, it freaking had um, Michael Wincott from The Crow in it, who is easily one of the most underrated actors out there. And I, I was like, damn, Michael Wincott's in this? <sighs> they got my attention. And uh, it sucks that they killed him off pretty early. It's like, damn, you just killed off Michael Wincott. Fuck you, Alien Resurrection. But uh, it's still, I, th- I can watch Alien Resurrection. But yeah, it's, it's definitely, if you're not ca- counting AVP, those movies, uh, it's definitely the worst of the bunch, for sure. Uh, Kyle, Kylie Anderson says, it's my favorite franchise, though. I don't know what I'd do without these movies. I'd, I'd lose purpose. Yeah. I'm with you, Kylie. I love the Alien franchise. It's such a, you know, it's so different than any other franchise out there, and they're quality movies. Um, uh, Gavito says, Lee, Alien Resurrection is my favorite of the whole franchise. Of course it is, Gavito. Of course it is. Okay, let's read through this story real quick, all right? I've talked long enough. Let's, let's read through the story. we got a lot of news to get to. I missed a super chat. Okay, let me get it. Oh, um, and I got one from Erica too. Man, I love this freaking OBS Live Studio because it puts my super chats right there on the left. I fucking love it. Erica, bro. Erica, how are you doing? She says, um, Alien without Ripley, wouldn't it be like Child's Play was without Brad Dorif? They replaced him with Hamill, who's amazing, but it still felt off. That is a very interesting statement. Um, I, and I think... Brad Dorif is Chucky, whereas Ripley's the good guy. She's not the xenomorph. So it's a little different, but I definitely see what you're talking about, Erica. And and Ripley is that important of a character. But again, what happens if we cast somebody else to play Ripley and she's, you know, she falls flat? You know, she she doesn't... Like, what what happens if we get what we got with the Nightmare remake with Nancy? You know what I mean? Uh, the portrayal of Nancy in that movie was... And I again, full disclosure, I like the Nightmare remake. But they fucked it up horribly with Rooney Mara playing Nancy. Can you imagine if they do that with Ripley? Oh my God. I'd, I'd probably... I'd probably start some kind of petition. I don't know what I, what would be on the petition, but I'd, I'd freak out. It'd be crazy. So, yeah, that's a good question, though. And I, speaking of the Child's Play remake, I get what you're saying. There was Nobody will ever top Brad Dorf as Chucky. And I think they approached it the right way with the remake. I don't know why they didn't want to play in the same sandbox um, uh, with uh, with that crew and, and, and Dorf. Um I'm forgetting the freaking guy, the guy who created Child's Play. Help me out, chat. But yeah, they didn't want to play in the same sandbox, so they had to come up with their own Chucky. And I think it was smart of them to not say, let's just try to copy Brad Dorf. You know, let's create our own Chucky. And because they did that, I like the remake. I think it worked pretty well, actually. That's a really good question, though, Erica. Really good question. George Hellman says, um, I want to see the final chapter in that trilogy, although I would like them to acknowledge Zeno's had technically... Oh, yeah. I I read this earlier. And just to add to that, because I didn't really mention, I would love to actually have the third part of that trilogy because there is a third part. I remember at one time, he was even... Don Mancini. Thank you, Destiny. Don Mancini. Um, I remember at one time... He was even saying, uh, really, Scott, that there was a media, uh, uh, a middle part between Prometheus and Covenant. And everybody was like, what? That's weird. You don't need that, <laughs> you know? Um, but then he was stating that there's a third part th- that takes place after Covenant that links right up to Alien. 
Uh, I think there's a lot of story left to be told, and I would love to see that third movie. Uh, and I think Covenant didn't do that well at the box office, and so we probably probably won't get it, unfortunately, George. I wish we would, but yeah, I don't think we will. Uh, George Hellman says, Alien Resurrection is better than Halloween Resurrection. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I can, I can still have a decent time with uh, Alien Resurrection. Uh, Halloween Resurrection, I get, I get pretty pissed off. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah, let me let me let me read through this story. Okay. All right, we talked about Into the Spider-Verse 2 last week. This week we're going to talk about the Alien franchise. Uh after Disney bought 20th Century Fox, there were rumblings as to what Disney would do with Fox's more mature franchises, such as Alien and Predator. While both franchises have had relatively <clears throat> recent entries, Disney is wanting to capitalize on both but primarily Alien. It's said that many of the executives at Disney see value in Alien as a franchise and are hoping to have a a new film out every year or two. And this is where, like, yeah, this is where we could be getting into fake news territory. Um, uh, No Ellen Ripley to save the day this time. Credit to 20th Century Fox. Disney originally wanted Ridley Scott for the rebooted film, which that would be kind of weird. But the script they got from him was convoluted and incoherent, far from the refresh that the executives wanted him, wanted from a reboot. Uh, we can exclusively report that a new script is in development from new writers. This new script is going to be a completely fresh start for the Alien franchise and will not feature any previous stars. So no Sigourney Weaver, no Michael Fassbender. It's also learned that many details from this script. Do keep in mind this is an early draft and elements from the script can and likely will change although the core elements will end up in the final script even for an early draft it's one of uh one that disney is confident in unlike uh, ridley's script uh they see this one as having long-term potential now um i see mary elizabeth winstead in there mary elizabeth winstead you know when i saw the um thing prequel she is definitely the strongest part of that movie and Joel Egerton. And I remember as I was watching that, I was thinking, man, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, if they were ever going to replace Sigourney Weaver, she would be the one to do it. And I would want to watch that. So, uh, yeah, I want to file that in my, in my prose for having a Ripley type of character. But, but of course this, she's not going to play Ripley, but if you're going to have Mary Elizabeth Winstead, why not have Ripley? I don't know. Female lead is Fiona, and the notes describe her as Mary, a Mary Elizabeth Winstead type. Um, I'm not going to read this whole like new plot synopsis that they have. Uh, the plans for the sequels and the Predator. Now let me let me let me read. Give me a second, guys. Uh, what's going to be different about this film is that Fiona is an attempt to study the face hugger and manages to capture and incubate one of the face huggers and manages to create an alien in a tank. However, the alien she grows has an attachment to her and has a chance to kill her, but doesn't. Fiona sends her created xenomorph after one uh, that attacked previously. Uh, There's said to be some amazing alien on alien action and will be unique for the series. This movie will end with the friendly alien sacrificing itself itself to kill the other. So there's a friendly alien and a... Oh, no, please don't do that. Oh, my God, that would be stupid. You don't make a friendly xenomorph. Is that what they're saying? Guys, is that what they're saying? That's fucking crazy. Don't ever make a friendly xenomorph. That'd be fucking stupid. Jesus. Pardon my French, okay? That'd be stupid. Pardon my alien resurrection. But, yeah. Don't ever make a friendly xenomorph. If that's what they're saying, then that's... That's really stupid. Yeah. Chris Snyder says Mary is another actress who nails it in horror but doesn't get enough recognition. I completely agree. Completely agree. She's one of my favorite actresses working today, for sure. Uh, Loved her in 10 Cloverfield Lane. And Black Christmas. Um, She's done a lot of horror movies, actually. Yeah. And The Thing prequel. Yeah. Erica says, This is what I'm saying, Disney. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? There's no such thing as a friendly xenomorph. Thank you, Brett. Very, very true. 
Kylie Anderson said, silly part is this story is 100% unaware of the new Predator that starts filming in a month. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to touch on that too. So, yeah, I guess that's... I've said everything I can say about this. Um, and I think this is all but confirmed to be a fake story. But it's still fun to kind of talk about the franchise and where it could go. Because, again, I do think we're getting another Alien movie. They're not just going to sit on that and not try to capitalize. It's too beloved of a franchise. 